Amen. Lord God the Father, I just ask you to bless this time, Lord. May Jesus be exalted, Lord God. And I just pray for the test for Louise, Lord God, everything be well. And Lord, look forward to the bike week coming up next week, Lord, and for my feet. And to the glory and honor of Lord Jesus, now we look into the John's Gospel, Lord. May you bless, may you be with my mouth. For Jesus' sake we pray, amen. Now we're on a study about the new birth, John 3, 3. We'll be on this maybe this week and maybe next week, maybe. Mm -hmm. See what happens. But there's much to be learned. <clears throat> so in John 3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then verse 7, Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Jesus said, accept and must. That's a priority. So we looked at last week as far as his new birth. And we're moving ahead to the spiritual birth. What is this birth? I mean, we know what a physical birth is because here we are living it. We're born of a woman, and here we are. And the, the, the new birth, the spiritual birth, like we talk, it's not going back inside your mother and being physically born. It's a spiritual birth. We saw the difference between physical and spiritual. Now about this spiritual birth, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And as you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus tells us, Scripture with Scripture, in Mark 16, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All right, so what happens if they get saved? 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's saved. He's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's the new creature. You are a new, new person, new birth. You're not of Adam the old. You're of Adam the second Adam. You're supposed to get rid of that old, nasty, wicked life you were living. You're to start living right. You start off as a newborn babe in Christ. I believe we'll see that later. But you are a new creature. We go out and preach the gospel to every creature. Somebody gets saved, they become in Christ. You're a new creature. We don't preach to you the gospel no more. Our public ministry is not focused to lost. I mean, to save people. Uh, sometimes I, all you do is preach heaven and hell, heaven and hell. Get saved, get saved, preach. Amen. Well, I'm in a public ministry. I'm in a public forum. I am dealing with lost people. If you want, if you are saved and you want a Bible study like we're having right now, I'll sit down with you. We'll grow in the Bible. But if I'm dealing with the world, I'm, I'm dealing with a public ministry. I'm going to deal with everybody who's being lost. If you're saved, amen, glory to God. Don't listen. If you're saved, you want to grow, hey, I'll help you grow. We'll, we'll do Bible studies. But I'm not to go preach on the street, you know, the mark of the beast or, you know, dispensate. That's not for the lost man. So with the spiritual birth, we get a new creature. We're new people. We're new. We're born. We're not, a, we're not the old creature. We're to be new. We're not to be like our old selves. Romans 6.23. And these right here, uh, there's no way I could put it in, in a Bible book order. This is the order that we'd have to study it by. Romans 6.23, which is written to Christians. I know we use it for evangelistic work. But Romans 6.23 is written absolutely to Christians. So, so with the aspect of being written to Christians, Christian, for the wages of sin is death. 
I am born again. I've been saved since April 25th, 1987. Outside the rapture, I'm going to die. Though I, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah, I got the gift of life. I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I am saved. I'm still going to die because I've been born of the Spirit. I'm a new creature, but I've still been born of a woman, the physical birth. I'm born with Adam's nature as a sinner. Sinners die. So because I'm a born-again Christian, and to add to a Bible-believing Christian, and I do what God tells me to do, study and preach the Word of God, that does not stop my death. I dealt with one guy one time in my life. Oh, I've never sinned. No, 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 no. As a Christian, you're still going to die unless the rapture happens. But let's, let's set things aside and let's look at our life. Romans 6.23 is written to Christians. We die because we still sin. Though we are a new creature. 1 Peter 1.23 1 Peter 1.23, we'll see. <clears throat> we start going through the scriptures. And I hopefully now, as you read your Bible, as we're going through the, the gospel, of, you know, haven't we learned a lot about John, through John? You know, I think this is the 66th or the 67th lesson we've done so far. You see, that's a lot of lessons, wow. but haven't we learned a lot? Now, as we're going through this scripture, I hope now when you read these passages in the Bible, say, oh, okay, I understand now. So, 1 Peter 1, 23, it says, the Bible said, being born again, there's John 3, 3, born again. Not of a corruptible seed, but incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and bideth forever. All right, when I was born, I was born of the seed of my mother and my father through Adam. Sinners. I was born to be a sinner. I was born to die. When you got saved, when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, first Peter said, you became born again. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Of a not corruptible seed of your mother and father. That's the physical birth that Jesus said to water. Now, here we go to physical. Here we go to the spiritual. But of incorruptible. What's the incorruptible seed? It's the word of God. It's that spiritual birth that we got. There's nothing physical to be seen. All right, here's my evidence of the new birth. All right, what's the evidence of the physical birth? Well, duh, me. Here I am. See, I'm here. What's the evidence of the new birth? Well, my life has changed, but anybody could change their life. Your name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Well, show you can't see the Lamb's Book of Life. That's in glory. But we were born of a corruptible seed through Adam. Born again is we're born by incorruptible seed by the word of God, which buys and lives forever. The gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So J Jesus said, he speaks to us in John chapter 3 about the water birth and about the spiritual. Peter goes further to say that spiritual new birth is the word of God. If you remember our John study way back when in John chapter 1, in the beginning was that word. And we looked at that word is yeah. Jesus Christ. So scripture with scripture. We are born of the spirit. The Holy Spirit. We're born of the word. We're born of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the spiritual new birth. John chapter 4 verse 24. And what we're looking at today is. What is that birth? Who am I? What am I now? John chapter 4. I hope you understand by this study. 
This study will tell you. And there, there's many Christians say, "Well, I'm born again." Okay, but they don't know what they what they're talking about. Like, right? you know, people say I'm rude and crude, and I'm not. I know many people who who, who say I'm a King James. Now I could be crude and crude. I could say, "Okay, why are you King James?" And they wouldn't have the foot. Uh, uh, my pastor says so. So your pastor is not capable of lying. There he is. Why are not these resources studied out in the churches today? Okay, I'm born again. Okay, what does that mean? That's what we're learning now. And I'm saying this is what I said last week. Don't go out in the public ministry, whatever you do, and don't say, "Are you born again?" Don't say that. Because most of the people don't know what they're what you're talking about. Not even Christians know what you're talking about, though it's Bible. And yet, if you were to talk to a Catholic, which I was ex-Catholic, are you born again? Oh yeah, I'm born. I'm born every week when I take the wafer. So in John four twenty four, as we move on, God is a spirit. Well, you remember Jesus said in John chapter 3, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. All right. So with 1 Peter 1.23, he says, we're not born of a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible, which is the word of God. And we ran that word to Jesus, John chapter 1, long, long time ago. All right, through Peter and John were born of Jesus Christ. John chapter 3 and 1 Peter 1, and what we read now, God's a spirit. Didn't Jesus mention the spirit in John chapter 3? God is a spirit. So your new birth, your spiritual birth, and has the Holy Spirit, John chapter 3, has the word which is Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 1. And John chapter 1 and John chapter 4, there's God in the first. So our new birth is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, incorruptible, Peter says. Now, as human beings, our birth is of mom and dad. And you can go even to scientific today. You can maybe not even mom or dad, maybe mom in a test tube. There's that maleness that brings our seed. We are not anything of man when we have our spiritual birth. It's of God. It's of the Son, Jesus. It's of the Holy Spirit, the three. That's what's involved in our new birth. So, Ephesians 2. Hopefully we're going slow enough. Ephesians chapter 2. So our new birth, our spiritual birth, is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Our first birth is born of mom and dad. So that's not hard to, to, to memorize. Our first birth has a mother. Our, our, our spiritual birth has no mother. Our first birth, our, our, our physical birth was natural. Mommy and daddy come together and make baby. Our spiritual birth, our new birth is supernatural, made by God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Science can't do the spiritual birth. Religion can't do the spiritual birth. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Run that back to Romans 6, 23. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God... There's God the Father and Jesus Christ, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. 
It's not a works. To produce a physical birth to be clean, it took a male and a female working. I want to be clean. The spiritual birth, it takes the Lord Jesus Christ, it takes God, and it takes the Holy Spirit. And it had no man in it. If you add man to the, to the new birth, there is no new birth. 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, 4. I mean, this is all what happened the day you guys say. And it may not be the day. I mean, by the day that we got saved is, you may, you may have been saved days before you were saved. Your heart may have already cried out to God for salvation before you cried out for God for salvation. It may took your mouth a couple days. Like I said, on a Sunday morning, I went to, to, to a Baptist church and I heard the gospel for the first time. Within a few days, I called my grandma and I said, I don't, something wrong. I, I need something. I don't know what it is, but. And that Saturday, there was an appointment made to meet with some people from the church at in the afternoon at my grandma's house. April 25th, I knelt down with my mouth. I confessed the Lord Jesus Christ and God said, I could have been saved Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Because my heart could say, God, I need you. I don't know what I'm doing, but that new birth could have been that week. The Bible says, with the heart man, man believeth unto righteousness. My heart man believed. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay, that came Saturday. The new birth could have been before Saturday. So for me, oh, they said a prayer they got saved. I want to hear it out of their mouth. Because if I don't hear it out of their mouth, all right, they may believe with their heart, but their mouth is supposed to also confess. I've heard many people say, well, they're saved. I didn't hear that. I said, they're saved. no, you said they were saved. I didn't hear them say it. That's scripture downs with people. Uh, you know, well, okay, that's fine. First John 5, 4, we'll see what the Bible has to say. Now, here we go with that born again. First John 5, 4. For whatsoever is born of God, does that sound from, that's the rebirth. Born of God, not born of mom, not born of dad, not born of water, born of God, John 3, 3, 2 Corinthians 5, 1 Peter 1, for whatsoever, it's funny because in John 3, 6, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, talking to lost people. John says whatsoever, and John's the writer of John 3.16. We've gone from a who to a what. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. What is it? Even our faith. Faith in what? Faith and belief in Jesus Christ is able to save my soul. And when I put my faith and belief with my heart, I became born again. The Holy Spirit came and dwelt in me. I became a new creature. A lot of people, oh, well, they said this prayer, or they become a new creature. No. Now, no, 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 I ain't talking about becoming sinless either. Listen. It took a few years after I got saved, I gave up on the alcohol. It gave up many years after I got saved to give up on the tobacco. It took many years I gave up on Christmas. It took many years I gave up on Easter. I'm not talking about giving up. It's when you became a new creature. Oh, church is tonight? A Sunday? All right, I'll be there. There's a church. This is how I grew. Wednesday night? Okay, I'll be there. And I went to church Wednesday night, 
and we're talking, you know, and I was invited to go uh, invitation. What's that? Unless we go knock on doors, we tell people about Jesus. Let's go. That's growing. Amen. Now, let me tell you, you know, people say, oh, you know, you, you're sinless, you're holy baloney and all that. No, 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 no. I'm trying to get people right. I'm, I'm trying to get people. Listen, I made mistakes. I would go knocking on doors. I go passing out gospel tracts wearing Marlboro T-shirts. Oh. Okay. Many of my young Christian life, I was wearing shirts I should not have been wearing, witnessing for Jesus. I don't wear those shirts no more. I grew out of it. Okay? I seen what's wrong. I see what's right. All right, I got to get rid of that wrong. I got to fight that wrong to do right. That's growing as a new creature. A couple weeks before I got saved, I went over to my dad's house and I had a bag with me, and, and for the first time, my dad and I, we shared beers. My dad's like, wow, this is a great moment. My son bought us me a beer, and we're sitting there drinking a beer. Well, a couple of weeks later, I come back over to my dad's house. I said, Dad, I said, listen, I don't want you to go to hell. My dad's like, don't you tell me to. No, 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 wait a minute, Dad, no, hold on. He thought you were telling me. I, I, I trusted Christ as my Savior yesterday. And I didn't know what I was talking about. I just don't want you to go to hell like I was going to hell. I'm not. See, I changed. I didn't become sinless. I'm still a sinner. I'm still fighting sin. But and growing in the Lord, I, what I learned is right. I learned what's wrong. I try to turn away from the wrong to turn what's right. And now I'm calling the question when you tell people, hey, listen, you know, what you're doing is paganism. Well, I like it. Well, I'm not saying you're not saved, but that's not the new creature. You're hanging on to the old man. And we're born of God. We're to overcome the world. What's the world? <coughs> the world is satanic. The world is carnalness. The world is, is paganism. The world is sin. Come out of that and do what's right. If somebody never wants to do right, never wants to read their Bible, never wants to go to church, never try to help themselves to improve themselves be a holy and righteous God, I don't know about your salvation. Because there's a change in me. Hey, you know what? I want to please my father. And if that don't please my father, listen, we still we we all had that 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 sin in our life or sins that we still battle, we battle, and we may enjoy it at times, but there are times, you know, Lord, you're in tears. I don't want to do that. I'm tired of doing that. I'm sick and tired of doing that. That's the new creature fighting the old creature. The old creature, I want to do it, I want to do it. New no, no, no. God don't want to do that. And that's the flesh battling the spirit and the spirit battling the, the flesh that we that Paul will tell us about. That new birth says, hey, I want to do right for God. That old birth is like, I want to do what's good for the flesh. And a perfect example of that is fasting. Now, I don't fast as much as I should, my diabetes, but there's time when you say, you know what? I'm going to have this period of time, no food. And my flesh looks at me, oh, well, hold on. No, 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 no. We ain't doing this. <laughs> you see, you know what? My old nature goes all the way back to birth. I need something to eat. I need something in my mouth. And I'm saying, no, 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 no. Now you start battling. When does the world fast? And don't give me this fast with Lent and all that. That's nonsense. You know? So 1 Peter 1 3. It's a change. And you know what? A lot of your family and friends are going to see that change. If it's true, they're going to look at you like something's happened to you. And that's remarkable when, when your friends and family like, because that's a testimony to you.
when you start putting those old clothes that you shouldn't be at, when you start putting those old holidays away, now, you know, people say, well, you, you do those videos. You, you're, I'm doing these videos so you can see the truth and so you within time can say, I'm not supposed to do that. I don't expect you to drop it like hot potatoes. Listen, when my wife, Lisa, and I gave up Christmas, we gave up the Christmas tree. But we still gave each other presents. And I'll tell you, giving up the Christmas tree, was it really godly and right? Well, the cats, the cats we had kept knocking the bulbs all over the house. Anyway, well, let's get rid of it. And then we and we start seeing, you know what? Would God be pleased with what I'm doing? And when you run up the history and the things that are being celebrated, no, God would not be pleased. I gotta get rid of that. It, hey, you may go cold turkey, boom, or you may have to simmer. But what's your attitude? First Peter 1 3. Blessed, you want to make God happy? That's what blessed means. Blessed be God the fa and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's God the Father and Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, he has begotten us again. This is my beloved son. My beloved, my begotten son. There's that birth. And to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. There is the new birth, the begotten. And not only are we begotten by the, by the new birth, by the spiritual birth, by being born again, but we also have the hope in the resurrection. If, if I die before the rapture, that's okay, because my body's going to go up anyway. I won't miss the rapture. Well, he died. That's okay. The, when the rapture comes, I'll go up first, <laughs> the Bible says. I will be resurrected. If I died in the old nature without the new birth, there would be no resurrection, but death and hell would cough me up at the great white throne judgment. Death and hell is not going to cough me up. God's going to call me from the death. And I'm surely not going to hell. I now have, I have been spiritually newborn. I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. What's that mean? I have been born of God by Jesus, by the Holy Ghost. I'm in the family of God. Now I have a hope of a re re I have a hope of a resurrection. Death ain't it. There's a guy at the farmers market. We, you know, once you die, that's it, uh, sir. I, I wish you would see. No, that's not it. I used to think before I was saved, my fear was when they put you in that coffin, you were still alive. You had senses. And whatever I, you know, you, I, I would see that darkness forever as I laid in that coffin. That was my fear. Well, I don't have that fear no more because the Bible says, "Be absent from the body and present with the Lord." Who bring it on? The minute I close my eyes here, I'm going to see Jesus. On one moment, I'm going to be walking down the street and I'm going to be up in the clouds. That's a hope by the new birth. Being born again. There's hope. There's hope. Philippians 1 6. There's great hope in the new birth. And you know what? You're not going to get this the day that you were saved. I didn't get it when I was saved. <laughs> You know what happened the day I got saved? I knelt down and received Jesus Christ for one purpose and one purpose only. So I can know about the tribulation period or I can know great Bible. No, I didn't want to go to hell. That's why I got saved. And God said, hey, you don't want to go to hell? Nope. Well, my son there, he suffered and died for you. I'll believe that. Okay, you believe that's fine. Now I, I, I became a member of God's family through the adoption of the Holy Spirit, which I had no idea was going on. 
And then look at all what God showed me just by believing God. There's so much. Read your Bible. There's so much in there. And it never stops. You keep believing God. It's there. Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this very thing. That he which begun a good work in you. Okay, what's the good work? Your new birth. The day that you became a child of God. That began your spiritual life. Will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. The rapture. Well, I thought, you know, if I died before the rapture. Still, God ain't finished with you. The Bible says after, after the rapture, that point, we're going to put on incorruptibility. We're going to get a brand new body. I'm going to look down at my toes and I don't know how I'm going to get my toes back. But God, at the, at, the, at the spiritual birth, at being born again, at the new creature, God has begun a work in us like you were born of work for your mom and dad. When your mom and dad gave birth to you, okay, first thing is, this is mom, this is dad. We got to change the diapers. We got to try to get you off uh, the breast, get you to a bottle. Then we get you to food that's not hard, but it's it's it, it's consistency. Then we get you into a cereal. Then we get you a biscuit that you can hold on that melts in your mouth. Then we can get you the whole cereal. And then we can get you the macaroni and cheese. And then we can give you one day a fork and a knife and you can have a steak. And then what we do is you're crawling on the ground and you're grabbing the furniture and you, you pick yourself up and you're scrawling on it. The, and then next thing you know, you take your steps and you're walking and then dad teaches you how to ride the bike and then now you're right. Growth. That's what God wants to do with you as a Christian. He don't expect you to know about the book of Revelation. Oh, I read the book of Revelation first when I got saved. Wrong. Don't do that. But, you know, when I got to the book of Revelation, I saw the doom of the devil. You know what this young Christian used to do? I used to pray for the devil. I would tell the devil, you need to get saved. And God would say, you know what? That's that, that, He's foolish. But he has a heart for lost souls. And that guy's praying for the devil to get saved. So let me show you, and the funny thing, let me tell you what happened in my life when I'm at church one day, and we had the, the, the chip tracks. I got into those. I thought they were Christian trader cards. They're all numbered. So I'm going to go out, and I'm going to gather, I'm going to get a collection of all the chip tracks. I had them numbered and titled. And I go every week and I check the chick track to see if there's any new ones I didn't get. All right? So I, I forget who it is. I, I, whoever he is, I, pray, I thank him and I pray for him. He says, Stop. He said, you know what to do with those? I said, yeah, I collect them. He says, you give them out. I said, no, I don't give them out. I said, the only way I'm going to give them out is if I trade you for one I don't have. Uh, he goes, <laughs> you know, Stiley, no. You're, these are to give to other people. No, I'm not. They're, they're mine. They're mine. And I'm here. I, I'm a little boy. Mine, mine, mine. <laughs> and he, he sat me down and he goes, no, these are to tell people about Jesus. They're, they're, you've already received Jesus as your Savior. Yes, I have. These are to tell other people how you got saved, how people can get saved, and how they cannot go to hell. And I'm like, Really? Well, how do I do that? You know, you, you hand them to people. You, there's all kinds of ways you can do gospel tracks. Really? You mean we don't keep them? No, you don't keep them. You, that man set me on fire for passing out gospel tracks from that day on. And I can tell you, I, I don't know how many, all the different ways. I go to the gas station. Rachel's pumping gas. I'm out doing every gas pump putting gospel tracks. Because that guy told me to a little baby and said, mine, mine, mine. He said, no, no, no. Let me tell you how to do it. <laughs> I grew in the Lord. And with Christians, you got to say, I want to keep Christmas. I want to keep Christmas. Okay, okay. Quiet. 
Relax. We'll work on this Christmas thing. Just like you do with any child. Okay? The stove top is hot. All right, you won't listen to me. I'm going to let you touch it. Sometimes we got to learn. But we're growing as we grew as a human baby. But spiritual, we're got to say, okay. And God saw that in me. He saw that the work in Okay, you got such a big mouth. You ready to use a big mouth. All right, ow. Stand on that street corner and preach. What? So I stood on the, on, on the, on the street corner of uh, Main Street and Boswell Avenue. All right? Great spiritual battle. There's no fear. I turned around and went in the car and said, I'm going home. And the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 no. Get out of that car go back to that street corner. Mm -hmm. I went back to that street corner. No one here. No one's going to listen to me. Turn around. Went, get out of that car. Mm -hmm. Went back to the street corner. No, no, no. Went to the phone, called Lisa up, said, yeah, yeah, you, know, you don't know what the Lord wants me to do. And that was the wrong person to call Lisa. Lisa's like, well, whatever God wants you to do, do it. Well, thanks a lot. Walked back to the street corner. Stood in that street corner. God said, just open your mouth. And I remember, you know, you can't open your mouth and fill it. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only thing. And I'll tell you, all these people started showing up. All these windows started open. People were coming out of businesses. I grew in the Lord. And God said, okay, I like you doing that. We're going to keep doing that. Because there's a work. There's a work that had begun with the new birth. And it's sorry for too many Christians. They are saved. They are saved. But they are spiritually retarded because they don't want to grow anymore. I'm not going to pass it. I'm afraid to pass out gospel tract because I may lose my job. What are they going to think about me? And I'm sorry, but many Christians do that. That's wrong. That brings a spiritual retardness. In Philippians 1 6, be confident, be confident. Whatever God has you to do, be confident. That which has begun a good work, keep on growing. You need a daily amount of food from the word. Water, honey, bread, salt. No sugar in the Bible. You need it daily. You need to pray daily. David and, and, and Daniel, three times a day, they would pray to the Lord. They would pray to God in the middle of the night. That helps you grow. Don't stop. My son, my wife and I brought him a bike. We got him the training wheels, and he rode around his training wheels. And got to the point we took him to a park. He, we're going to teach him how to ride his bike without training wheels. And he never wanted to do it. He refused. Okay. And he never rode his bike again. You can't do what you don't want to do. As far as learning how to ride a bike, my son became physically handicapped, retarded, because, no, I'm not going to do that. Fear. And we do that. Fear does that in our Christian walk. And the greatest thing to learn is when we got that fear, we say, confident, God is going to get me through. Oh, boy, what God does. You know what that's called? That's called growing in the Lord like you grew physically with your mom and dad. Listen, I, I don't remember my, my parents showing me how to ride a bike. But I, I can tell you right now, after I learned how to ride the bike, there are so many death-defying things I've done with my bike that I should have been afraid of, but I wasn't. And I'm surprised I didn't end up dead or in the emergency room for all the stuff I did on my bike, and right now they're coming. But I had to break that fear of riding without the training wheels. I got to break that fear of this flesh saying, don't do it, and God say, do it.
Because it's a good work, the Bible says it. I'll tell people all the time, well, I can't witness. The Bible says preach the gospel. Don't preach the other night, come to church. No, that's wimpy now. It didn't say come to church. It said you preach the gospel. And the greatest thing you can do is gospel tracts. And you don't even have to deal with people with gospel tracts. Go into a public bathroom. When you're done with your business, leave a gospel tract by the toilet paper. Are you on the cash? So that's that. First John four. You are growing now, as you grew as a human being. And I'm saying it. There's no growth. There's either two things that happen. You are spiritually retarded, and I don't mean anything to retardness, or you're not saved. First John 4, 7. Our job is to go in the world and preach the gospel to all the creatures. <coughs> Once they get saved, they become a new creature. They get a new birth. They are now born of God. It is now our job to raise them. Too many churches and Christians... Get them saved, get them saved, get them saved. And then they don't raise their kids. We got a generation of kids today who don't even know what their father is, who their father was, have no idea who their father can be. And the churches preach, well, okay, where are your converts and how are they growing in the world? Well, I don't know. You're just as much as a fatherless child as their fatherless children out there in the world today. Because who... Who, who in their right mind would, would have a child, raise it, bring a child into this world and not raise them? Many of you are Christians. Mm. We have an altar call, but we don't have an, a, a growth. It's our responsibility, yeah, to go in the world and preach the gospel. It's also our responsibility to help them grow in the Lord. So 1 John 4, 7. I hope. Me writing again. Beloved. That's John writing to, to the Christian. By the way, this is the same John's writing the gospel of John. Mm -hmm. Beloved, let us love one another. Don't hate any other Christians. Now, you may not get along with them. I mean, there may be Christians that, you know what? Your lifestyle, my, we're just total. Okay? And there's a couple I can think of like that. It says, you know what? We are two sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with you, and there's nothing wrong with me, but I don't like what you do. Hey, I'm not talking about, I'm just saying, what you, I don't like what you do. And you don't like what I do, but don't hate them. Mm -hmm. I pray for them. I love them. There you go. Like, I can't go play golf. I, I had a group, church group try to take me out playing golf. I went four or five times, and by the fifth time, I'm out there aiming for animals. And I started the holes over there. <clears throat> Not the hole. I'm going for that chipmunk. <laughs> How many more holes we got? We're halfway through. <laughs> All right, guys. You know, I love you in the Lord, but this golfing. I mean, there's Christians who play golf. This golfing. <laughs> This sucks. <laughs> Let's go on the street and press up some golf. And then, oh, 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 we're supposed to do that. I mean, it, it, listen, I don't like golfing, but if you golf as a Christian, go for it. God, go ahead, you do it. I don't like it, but I'm not going to hate you because you do something stupid. Okay? That's. You don't have to do everything they do, as long as it's not a sin. But brethren, let us love one another, for the love is of God. Amen. All right. Everyone that loveth is born born of God. You know what that new spiritual birth does? It gets rid of your hate. If you maintain your hate, there, there are there, there are organizations out there. Well, we hate the Jews, we hate the colored people, but we're Christians and we're gonna burn the cross. Mm -hmm. That's not Christian-like. That's what it is. 
and knoweth God. You know what the spiritual birth, it gets rid of the, it, spiritual birth erases the hate. Hate to use the word, word. And it gets you to know God more. You know what the Bible says you are to hate? You're to hate sin. You're to hate every wicked way. You're to love the right way. And golfing is not evil, it's not sin. Or I hate you because you golf. And even, listen, I hate the Catholic Church. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. But I don't hate the people in it. I don't hate Catholics. We don't have that hate as children of God. I hate sin. But I'd love to hear about a Christian going out doing something for Jesus. I, I heard the other day, I was talking to a Christian, he's going through the book of Matthew. Said, All right, praise the Lord. Lord, Amen. keep him going. Keep him going. Keep him going. That comes with a new birth. First Peter 2 2. You grow. You grow from the new birth as you grow with your, your spiritual birth. I mean, your physical birth. If you don't, you are spiritually retarded. And I, I had people yell at me for that. I'm sorry. I've known people who've been retarded, and that's a proper word. You get offended, shut up, and go somewhere else. But there are Christians, our spirit. You would think they're lost. They're not lost. They're spiritually retarded. They, at one point in their time, they said, God, no. That's to their failure. And a spiritual retardness is your choice, not God's choice. And you were not born to be like that. Now, there is physical retardness that they were born mm -hmm. with that retardness. And maybe medications or something. Like, maybe. I don't know. But a spiritual retardness is no God. I'm not going any further. No, I am not going to change the Bible. I'm going to stay with my modern Bible. No, I'm not going to witness to anybody. No, I'm not even going to think about giving that up. Mm. And that moment there, you're retarded. You can't grow in the Lord. 1 Peter 2, 2. As newborn babes, well, what's that? Newborn baby. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Read the passage. Desire the sincere milk of the word. All right? Ready? You got a baby. It's crying. Here, little baby. Here's my Bible. Enjoy. It's going to slobber all over it. You don't give a King James Bible to a newborn baby. Say, here, enjoy. He'll probably start sucking on it. We're not talking about the physical birth here in 1 Peter 2 2. Guess what we're talking about? We're talking about newborn babes in Christ through the spiritual birth. What's it say? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, King James, that ye may grow thereby. What's the first thing you do when you. God has allowed you to lead someone to him under salvation. Very first thing is you get them a Bible. You get them in the word. And it better be King James. Don't send them movies. Did you watch the robe? Did you see the, the Exodus? Did you get rid of that crap? Get them in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And check up on them like you would do with your children. What you doing in that room over there? Okay. Checking on you. You read your Bible today? That's good. You Wow, glad for you. You didn't read your Bible today? Well, you know, before you go to bed today, try to read one chapter, please. It's good for you. I know that book you're reading right now, it's a hard it's hard for me. I hate number 7. It's drawn, but you'll go through it. It won't end your life. And if you do, you'll be absent from the body and present with it. Read it. 
grow in it. How many times have you seen churches do that? We'll give you our Baptist bread. Yeah, but that's that almost sounds like the Catholic daily bread. Abstain from all appearance of evil. I would just give them a regular Bible chart and read what the Bible. Never mind what man has to say about the Bible. Read what the Bible says. And you're going to get them a Bible. Don't get them a Bible with, with notes in the Bible. Don't get them a Scofield. There's nothing wrong with the Scofield Bible. Get them a plain fashion chapter and verse two column Bible with no notes. So they don't go over. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, let's see. Let me try to see if I can find one. Oh, there's some notes in my, in my a better rendering. You don't want them reading that mess. You want them just reading the Bible. You don't give a newborn baby a T-bone steak and say, ha-ha. That don't work. You got to get them from, from the breast to, to different contingency of food. That's what you do with a Christian. Don't take a newborn baby and, well, let me tell you what you know about the Antichrist. He ain't ready for the Antichrist. And for every Christian that is newly born, I get them in the Gospel of John first. And then 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. Then I would say, okay, now you're ready for some meat. Get into Genesis 1. Read from Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation. Well, I got this book from this doctor. I got this book from the No! They're not ready for that. And you may be handing them poison. It says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. The word, that's the Bible. Not what this doctor wrote or that doctor wrote. It was many, many years that God introduced me to Dr. Ruckman. I wasn't ready for Dr. Ruckman. And when the Lord said, okay, I'm ready for Dr. Ruckman, the Lord said, okay, now I'll bring you to Dr. Ruckman. And you won't believe me how the roads were that God led me to Dr. Ruckman. That you may grow thereby, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is great. You know what you're supposed to get out of the Bible reading? To see that God tastes good. And let them come, and don't give them an attitude. Let them come up to you and say, you know what I just read today? What would you read? Interesting. You know King David slept with another man's wife and killed him? Really? What, what happened? I don't know. I haven't got to that part yet. Keep on reading. You want me to read? It happens all. Isn't that what happens on your television set? Yeah. Find out what the Bible has to say about it. Don't get them mixed up in, in, in what man has to say. Get them into what God has to say. That's what's important. We don't need that other bookshelf crap. Get them into the Word of God. As newborn babes. What's that newborn babe? The day he got saved. Now, how many Christians go out there and they, they get a new convert to Jesus Christ? They got saved. When's the last time you ever heard them get, a, get them a Bible? A gift Bible. I, I had a pastor tell me, well, you know, they don't remember their, when they were saved. Oh, man, that's a loaded diaper. Get them a gift Bible, open up to the dedication page, and say, all right, here's your name. Day, uh, now, this is not the date I'm giving you as a Bible. This is the date. Remember the date you received Jesus as your Savior? Okay. All right, we'll write that down right there. Oh, but, you know, you know what the ministries are? They're all about the man and not the man Christ Jesus. Now, I'll tell you, I went, they told me, Go witnessing. I said, okay, I'll go witnessing. I'll do it. So we went witnessing. This is how not to do it. This is the first carnal church I was in. 
We went knocking on doors. It was a visit of a guy who hadn't been in church in a while. Mm -hmm. I watched the pastor take his Bible and put it on the, uh, over here, and I watched him list, go listen to uh, Def Leppard and all that other nonsense. I sat there as a new Christ. I'm like, that ain't right. In fact, and then, then okay, we went to church, and, and, and this is before I met Lisa, and church was out, and all the kids were happy, and they run to the basketball court, and they take their Bibles, and they whiz it across the basketball court. Like, it's, now you're talking to someone who stole their first Bible, and I stole a, a living Bible because it had pictures in it. But I, I had a Bible. I didn't. No one ever told me what Bible to get yet. Oh, I had me a living Bible and had pictures in it. And then I get in church. And I see a Bible be put on top of the hood, uh, on top of the roof of the car. I see him drive off and just go flying off into the street. That's not what you teach new Christians about the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You see, the church and the Christians, what they have for the word of God, will show the product of what their converts will be in their later life. Why are the churches failing? Because when they get saved, they don't get them in the word of God. They get them into the world. That's, sad. that's what it is. And it's very sad. Very sad. Wow. 